you want to um, hang out and just do unicorn spit, you have found the right place. And, you know, all my friends, <laughs> all my friends, <laughs> it's TikTok, that's it, my friends. <laughs> uh, they know I'm a unicorn spit affiliate, which doesn't mean I know everything. <laughs> Trust me, I am learning and playing in this stuff just as you are. But um, I have learned some things along the way and I do love to share it. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna work with a cradle board and I'm not sure if I wanna do the back, the inside of it. Most generally people paint, on, do their designs on the out um, because it leaves you a nice place to put your D-rings and wire and it goes flush to the wall like this. So the cradle boards, they're really not expensive. I'm shocked. Um, I got a stack of these and they just keep getting smaller and smaller on Amazon. And I just recommend that, especially if you're interested in um, playing with your unicorn spit and doing flow trolls, because they seem to go fast. It's not something like you work it on it for months and months, <laughs> like my mermaid. It's not like that. So speed dating for artists, that's what this is. Oh, hearts. Okay, you guys, I want to fix my phone. Thank you. Um, let me, okay, I can't even come back in. So, wow. I'm flying blind, real blind now. <laughs> okay, let's do this. So, anyway, um, if you want to do it on the front, do it on the front. If you want to do it in the back, do it. If you want a nice, thick pour where you can really, your fluid pour, you can really move things around, use the back because it gives you a nice frame. And then you're already ready to resin. Um, and you'll have a really cool piece of art. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna flip it around because I think I'm gonna use gesso and unicorn spit. So you would do this, um, you can use gesso to give another extra layer of seal it's just acrylic just I apologize that it's such a mess this is driving me crazy I can't see you guys at all anyway um, so you can just paint it on like you would anything else I like to put some sort of white highlight somewhere in that while I'm painting around in my unicorn spit on the very first part even when I know it's going to be covered up because once in a while you get back to that highlight after you've done lots and lots of layers and you can get really a lot of depth that way it looks galaxy like and since I don't know which direction I'm going I'm just gonna do that man I hope if Sherry or Shannon are there well I know Holly and Randall <laughs> you guys help me out here I I'm, I'm flying blind I can't see anything so I appreciate you hanging out. Anyone who's willing to talk to anybody else and answer questions, I appreciate you. <laughs> and the ones just hanging out and watching this, I appreciate you. So I'm just gonna do this quickly with this and then I'll dig it in a little bit more. And I'll definitely put more gesso than this on this piece, I think. Wow, what a life. What a life. And I, this is the point where I think, ooh, what kind of colors do I want? <laughs> and I don't know what kind of colors I want because I don't know which direction I'm going. So I'm really tempted to, you know, not do scenery or anything, just um, just free-flowing colors, just pulling them through. Now, this is not the flow trial part. This is the gesso part. And there's nothing to say that when you get done making your beautiful piece of art on one side, that you can't flip it over and do a totally different piece of art on the other and make yourself a reversible piece of art. And... That's, that's what this was. Give me a second. So this is unicorn spit. 
one wood, just like what we're doing, except it's flipped around. That's the cradle. And then that driftwood was gorgeous, so I had to do that. And then I did a ghost pour on the back. So now that it, it if it sits on a table, um, like an end table, that both the front and the back are done, and people can just walk around. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just a on my shelf. Hold on. All right. So anyway, we're not limited to just one side of the the piece. That's why I love working with the wood cradle boards. You know, you get so many options. Very thin. It's so quiet in here. I can't see anybody. I thank you for the love. I feel the love. Okay, that's pretty thick. That's a real thick gesso. Yay. All right. So let's just throw some straight unicorn spit in there. You know, my favorite, wouldn't you know, this and Zootil. Um, Zootil, this baby. It's gorgeous. There's a sparkling one or something like that, some glittery one I gotta get. And I just found out, you guys, I was watching Michelle Nicole the other day, and um, there's actually sparkling glitter gel unicorn spit that does not have color. So to me, I liken it to when I'm working with my alcohol inks and this blending solution, Stardust Blender, which is packed full of glitter. That's what I'm likening it to <laughs> on my unicorn spit. So I gotta get some. <laughs> I just wanna see what it does and what it looks like. Experiment. So the white won't show up obviously, but it's okay because I want it to be blending with it. And I always go purples and blues because I like it. So I might do something like that. Oh, and then we've got these um, artistic vivations Dionysus, Dionysus. That might be pretty. I think I'll just start, ooh, that's hair. I think I'll just start putting it in any old which way. So let's start with the purple. Oh, I do wanna try some sort of something. <laughs> You know, something that looks like something at the end, but I can't tell you right now what it's going to look like. But I like this. I like this metallic. Now, you really should, <laughs> if you want to save money, um, dilute this down because you don't need it that strong, usually. It is super, super concentrated. However, <laughs> my caveat is this is gesso, and I'm using the gesso as like a medium so I'm just going to push this purple right into that gesso in various ways here and there. So that is in itself going to not dilute, but you know, mute it a little bit because the gesso is white. And there's no rhyme or reason, just putting in color here and there, whatever you feel like. This can dry and then we can go ahead and put um, the flow troll on it and do a pour right on top of it if we want. Let me add some Midnight Blackness and it is Midnight Blackness? Yes. Super concentrated like everything else. It's hard not interacting with you guys. I, this is just the, this is just awful. I wonder if I'd take off my watch if that would help. <laughs> then I can't see the time or anything. Perfect. Whatever. Maybe this will be a um, galaxy. Who knows? Let's see. What other colors do we want to put in here? I wish I could see. Ooh, look how pretty it's becoming already. Oh, I love the way you just kind of slice the colors through. 
this gesso. And you know, I like the, the look of a vignette where it's kind of darker on the outsides and then lighter in the center. So maybe I'll do something like that. I did use a lot of the Midnight Blackness. Overkill. Total overkill. So that's okay though. And there is more times than not for me that um, I will scrape a bunch off. <laughs> um, sadly, because you don't want to waste it. So just put it over here on a palette or, you know, like scrape it into one of these cups because it'll dry, but you just add water to it. If you haven't had Floetrol or Jezzo, <laughs> um, add water to it and um, it'll reactivate again. So it's kind of like a watercolor in that sense. There's really no waste, if you can say it. <laughs> that in mind. It's so quiet because if you're asking any questions I can't see you so I can't even answer. Let's put some sparkling red in there just for fun. And it's not called red, it's Dolly Firebird. Ooh, that purple and red. No, where we're going. I like the sparkling gels because they aren't as pigmented, you'll find. And at first that kind of bothered me because I was thinking of it as kind of like a metallic or an iridescent or something where you have the, a stronger pigmentation. But um, then once I started playing with it and saw how they flowed with the other ones, uh, I began to really <laughs> dig it. <laughs> Because I use it now if I want a, a sparkling red, I'll just put Dar Dolly Firebird in, in the red, you know? So I'll get my own sparkle somehow. But a lot of times you like that transparent color, I think. Gosh, you guys, I do apologize for my technical difficulties. I have no hope here <laughs> because my hubby, who is a tech person, <laughs> is um, running around doing stuff. <laughs> so I hear him, but it sounds like he's outside. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, look how cool this looks. Just running this back and forth into the, that. Oh, I love it. So this is just going to be a background to whatever. And there's no certain way to do it. I mean, if you're trying to stain the grain, then of course uh, go along the grain. But if you're just painting on it, and especially like with this gesso, it doesn't matter which way you go. <laughs> you do anything you want. Just fabulous. All right. Let's see. And this one, I, I just want to play. So I just want to keep moving the gesso around and moving the unicorn spit around until I start to see something that starts to pull me in and it either looks like something or um, it's just a cool shape that happened or cool flow and then I'll just kind of follow that along. Sometimes it'll end up taking me all the way to the end of thank you for whatever that was. That was beautiful. I saw a glimpse of something <laughs> um, all the way to the end of the painting and sometimes it what I call leave you hanging. You thought you had a vision you know, you thought you knew where you were going, and all of a sudden you're out there by yourself. <laughs> it just leaves you there. A little more black, I know. I'm going to put it now, I'm just going to start putting it on a palette. And that way I can dip around different colors. And I think some brown would be pretty in here, but then I, ha I do have a problem with color combination. <laughs> uh, the problem is I just can't, I just can't quit. I won't quit. So 
Um, but that's okay. Man, I was so inspired, you guys. I don't know what you're doing right now, but I, I just hope this encourages you because the other day I was working on my mermaid and <laughs> I felt all depressed. Her face, her body, whatever. Uh, so I was working on her and, um, well, let me just show you because it's, it's hard to understand. Let me just show you. It, it's still a mess, so I'll be right back. Hold on. All right. <laughs> so there it is. This is acrylic and unicorn spit and texture gels and paste. But, um, so her face, her body, her tails, everything. Um, I was working on that and I started getting depressed <laughs> because I was putting expectations on me that, um, because it's a big, I'm just gonna break from what I'm doing, okay, and talk about this, because maybe some, this will help somebody else, a new artist or something. I've been painting for 30 years and I'm still learning. <laughs> so, but in my process, okay, is I've been fighting and struggling and finally overcoming that, you know, thing that wants to stop me all the time from just doing what I want as a creator, okay? And it's in my head somewhere some rules were put in there from somebody, I don't know. So I'm fighting to break those rules, okay? One of the rules that I found out recently I had in my head was if I'm working on a huge board, which for me, this is huge, okay? Um, if I'm working on one of these, I felt like all of a sudden I needed to make things that were large. Like if I was going to, I know it sounds stupid when I say it out loud, but still hear me out because <laughs> I just felt like, well now, because I'm on a big board and, and the big kids playground, I can, I should make something really big or else it's a waste. Well, I tried to make my mermaid big and that's as big as I could get her. Uh, honestly, that's as big as I could get her. <laughs> but that wasn't the joy. The joy was coming from all of this other stuff, all of those weird things, you know? And when I realized that, I thought, well, I had so much fun on the big board, you know, but since I do little things, nobody wants to sit there and look at all those little things. So I said all that <laughs> to say I went to Facebook and oh my gosh, I did that painting that I fell in love with. It was little tiny stuff that I love to do, little tiny stuff on a huge thing like this all over the place and it was, it took my breath away, of course, because that was, my heart was just drawn to it. So I, and I look, and she has this gorgeous gallery, and she's selling it for like $3,700, and I was like, oh, so you can, you can do whatever you want. I always say that, but you know, some rules, some rules die hard. So anyway, if, if that's you, in any aspect, too little, too big, whatever. <laughs> I don't know where those rules come from that I have in my head, but that one was shattered. And I'm thrilled because, like I told my husband, I don't know why I thought I, I had to make big things because I'm on a big thing. <laughs> whatever. But, so now I'm excited. I'm going to go hunt down a big canvas and I'm just gonna play like I love to do, which is just little sections. It's kind of like having a whole bunch of canvases on one, cause you just move from section to section, you know? And it can change and just let yourself, let yourself go and let it, let it change. So, okay, the gesso is drying and I really like this lake of fire I got down here. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. Uh, we will be winding this up shortly. I'll just spread this out a little bit more. And since I can't see what anyone is saying or whatever, um, please leave me a message if you have a question. Um, I would love to answer it if I can or point you to the direction of a person that can. <laughs> so, and also I'd encourage you guys, if you are into the unicorn spit at all, go to the Facebook group uh, questions and answers and also um, artistic vivations and unicorn spit that they're, they're all on Facebook and there's lots of people that ask the same questions so everyone struggles with certain things it seems and that's a good place to learn
from even um, and it's not just uh, Unicorn Spit affiliates and all that it's it's everybody that works with Unicorn Spit it's how they discover things or the problems they may be having so it's a really cool community and um, almost as cool as this one right here <laughs> This is getting gorgeous. Okay, so I'm just dragging the edge of this flat brush around through my colors. It's it's bold, but um, it's so pretty. Look at the different flow. And that's just gesso. It's not even the flow troll. So there will be a, a thickness to this due to the gesso already. Just so you know. It's not real thick, but <laughs> there it is. I, I really kind of like this red sky. Okay, this is pretty. I want to add more white. So, I don't know exactly where. Maybe, let me just get a, let me get a horizon line somewhere. Could be up high. It's going to end up somewhere real soon. So, on a horizon line, um, just the rule of thumb is basically thirds if you're new to painting or whatever um it's not a hard fast rule you know you do you do you for sure but if you want a horizon line they say the basics of is a third of the way up okay so a third from the top interesting so you just don't basically want it flat dab in the middle unless you want it flat dab in the middle <laughs> then by all means put it there <laughs> So, and I don't know if this is a horizon line or where the beach is coming in. I'm not sure, so. But I just, those things kind of help because a lot of times you don't know where to, to start putting in something. So, just your eye, it's more pleasing to the eye is what they say, whoever they are, those experts. Ooh, that's neat. So, I just put in that strip of white and then going back and forth, it kind of makes a shadow, takes the white away, and it shows those darker colors underneath. And that's the same way I would make a wave. So um, those colors underneath get picked up as that top layer goes away. So let's go ahead and do that right fast. It's an awful straight wave. <laughs> That's okay. Let me just get some white on my the end of this. Maybe I'll use a palette like a an artist. All right. Let's put some of that on there. I just want to push it in a little bit. along the edge. That's awful red. And that's awful white. Just move it back and forth. Do whatever you want. So I just got lost, you guys. I hope you have good music on or something. Really struggling with this copyright stuff again. I'm fixing to pay some money <laughs> to just get this. The thing is, it, I, I need more than just songs. You have to pay the money to get the songs, then build your own list from the song. I'm putting some brown, that, this. I'm putting that in just underneath, real dark, with some black just to push it up. This is where I just start playing. I'm thinking as a, of a wave, and yet at the same time, I don't wanna you know, keep myself locked into that. It may be something totally abstract. I just like to see the different looks when you add different colors and then you push your different brushes around in different directions. <laughs> Those basically just playing in your unicorn spit until something cool pops up and 
There's been a lot of cool, but I'm not like, it's not gasp worthy. It's nothing to stop on yet. I think I'll put some blue in though for sure. I just love layering. You never know what's gonna happen. Okay, I'm just gonna go straight up. Just forget the um, forget the ocean scene for right now. I just felt the urge to explore. So I'm gonna. It almost looks like the edge of a castle. That might be interesting. And I probably will take all of this out again. But you never know what's going to come of it. So don't hesitate. If you feel like you want to go up, <laughs> go. You never know what's up there. <laughs> okay, so I'm definitely getting into the texturing thing. Back to the abstract thought and I'm turning it real muddy and I don't care um, right now so by turning it muddy I just I'm not washing my brush as often as I need to to keep those colors crisp but that's okay because this is in gesso it's the underneath side and I don't really want crisp at this point I just want movement and just different color patterns. It's just a background. Put some more white and brown. I like that brown really a lot. This is cool. It almost looks like a big shell. Well, you guys, I totally apologize for not being able to converse with you. Um, I'm pretty sure my thing from TikTok's gonna say, here, let me help you <laughs> show you how to do better. Um, but anyway, I appreciate those that did hang out um, and just, you know, stayed here. Watching me play and paint, not being able to communicate with you, I apologize. Look how pretty that looks. <laughs> I just get lost anyway. <laughs> Back to the circles. You know me with circles. If you, don't, if you don't ever know what to paint, just do that. Just do circles. You'll be amazed where it, where it ends up. It really is true. Some of the neatest art that I have finally made <laughs> came from stuff like this. No rhyme or reason. And half the time, it was the ones that I thought, boy, I really messed this and I almost pitched it. Because, you know what's funny? I think it's like that because at that point, you're like, well, what difference does it make? And then you just start painting. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it starts coming together. I think that's true. So I just put white there just because it looked like it was calling for some. And honestly, you guys, this is my process. Um, you just play until something strikes you and you want to explore it. And it's relaxing, especially if you can have some music on. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. I like to see when you're doing with the dark and light contrast at the edge of your brush, sometimes when you poke it in there, it just automatically creates this cavern or this cave. And it's really exciting to get down in those little places 
and start poking around and seeing what you can find and then just go with it see if you can create make it make it look more like a cave or whatever and then if not that's fine but that's what I do <laughs> just in case you're wondering at this point you probably are not <laughs> it's okay so well um, you know what I am going to get off of this so I can um, figure out what's wrong with my phone so this was this was a live I did not expect so I kind of like to hang on and keep working a little bit but I just I hate that I can't um, see anybody oh I got a message from from Thomas that said he loved the mermaid. Thank you so much. You are so sweet. <laughs> yeah, it just won't let me. So, I'm just going to go ahead. You guys go. <laughs> go, my children. <laughs> Have a beautiful day. Um, enjoy your art. And uh, whatever it is your hands find to do, do it with all of your might. Um, I just want to blend this out a little bit more because I kind of like the idea, whatever this is, I still kind of like it. I just don't want lumps and I'm working with gesso. So if you want to hang out with me, that's cool. I just know that I can't see you or, or talk to you or anything like that. But please leave me, leave me a message <laughs> and I will definitely get back to you. So I'm just going to blend in some um, white and some water. On my on my brush and you know what I think I'll use Celine this is the artistic vivations white which is uh, has a slight iridescence in it which is fabulous and they do respond differently than the unicorn spit also still fabulous but um, so you'll have to just play with them <laughs> and you can mix them right into the spit. You don't have to, you know, keep them separate or like that. Spit, you can mix with anything, I kid you not. Okay, I'm kind of getting a water lily looking thing over here. This might be pretty. So as I'm trying to blend. Okay, that is sky, if that's the water lily. <laughs> No, it's still too high. I may have to be water at the top third of this. That's all right. And back to the water. I just love to see the way it's blending. I like doing different levels as well. I think that's why I like the treasure box because you get the lid and then the side of the box and then the bottom. It's like paint it all. That's pretty. You want to see? It? I don't know. I just do like color flow. I don't like the way the white just comes up and just like totally stops. They either want water out of it or something. More white. Ooh, look at that. That looks like, hold on. Maybe, maybe a palette knife. Now might be a good time to throw some Floetrol in there. Let's do that. I've got a little bit of strained Floetrol. I'm just gonna do that. I'm mixing it in just with my palette knife. I'm just like run it straight across. Ooh, that's so cool. I was gonna do that. I might just keep going. Curving. Interesting. I love palette knives. You can just tap around with them, and make the coolest little uh, designs. 
I'm just putting some Floetrol in the palette and some more white because that was fun. Look at all the pretty colors coming up through that. And this is just the white Ning that I'm using on that right now of the regular unicorn spit. And Floetrol. All right, so that's a lot. I'll blend this out, but isn't that pretty? I just want to play. If you don't have anything in mind, it's a lot more free. Because <laughs> your brain doesn't, doesn't want to stop you. It's like, oh, that's not right. <laughs> it doesn't look like that. If you just don't have anything in your mind, you're just going for the pretty colors and the the flow, then it's like, oh, it's really nice. You can just watch it happen and you, you're never disappointed. <laughs> Ever. Let's see what else happens. Let's get some of this, whatever that is, Zeus. Let's put Zeus up in that red. Zeus is the one that will actually kind of glow, I believe, in dark, uh, that UV light or whatever. Maybe wrong. Um, I'll put some Floetrol on that as well, just for fun. I'll just put some Floetrol everywhere. We'll play with that for a second. And, and just different colors will be dripping here and there. How's that? And you know, this could totally be the back, actually. The front could be an actual seascape or, you know, whatever. Lighthouse, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and this baby could be the back of it. We could go with a reversible art piece. I think I want some black, actually, in some of this. If I put black in that Zeus, it's gonna be green. But that's okay, because it'll probably be moss green. We'll see. Oh, it's so pretty, though. A little more flow chal. Let it, I just want it to, look how pretty that is. <laughs> and a little more white. It's the white that makes everything pop. It is to me. Just put it in with the floor troll. Now, if you spritz this with water, that'll be a whole new thing. Um, that's just water. Now, since I didn't mix the flow troll with water and I didn't mix the unicorn spit with water, it doesn't want to move well. So this is not how I would normally do a pour, but I do love to see the colors run. And I thought you might too. So. So let's see. It's just so pretty. Mix them up so they get them moving. They running at all? Wow. So I'll just 
pull out that up. Doesn't really matter what I'm doing. It's all gonna be just background, but it's fun to play in, is it not? like one of those preachers that can't close a sermon. <laughs> it's like, and in closing, class is almost over. No harsh on those preachers. I love them all. All right, so I am going to wet it down because I don't, I'm not thrilled with a lot of it. So this is what I do <laughs> when I'm not thrilled with a lot of it. And I've been working with Unicorn Spit, even if it's just so it's okay. And just go ahead and let it run. I have a little Floetrol Plus water, and so I could squirt that on too, here and there, and see if that would help move things around. I just like the uh, Flow paint better than I do the brush stroke paint when you're looking at a background. Oh my gosh, look at that, guys. Look at the colors. Amazing. Unicorn spit, baby. Ugh. Even though I've... All right. Yeah, who says it has to be that way? It's getting really muddy down there. But I kind of like that mossy, muddy stuff. There's a lot of ways to use that that in art oh gosh look look <laughs> this is the part that starts turning out really cool look at that webby looking stuff it's messy i know it's oh gorgeous messy but let's put some black but i'll put it right on that this is the fun part. Everybody else went home. <laughs> Take me this long to get get moving. And then I'll add some of that Celine. Right down here. And maybe maybe that Zeus in the black to get that green if we can get a green. I don't know what we'll get on that. We may not get anything. I'm gonna put some more pure flow troll in it. I'm just, it's a good thing it's wood. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I don't have to worry about the weight of it. So, okay. Well, I, I um, gotta grab my chopsticks out of the drawer because I resined my last chopstick. <laughs> so, okay, let me just this is cool. I like what it's doing on its own. I don't know what this is, though. So. I'm hearing a beep. Somebody's still there. Thank you. Love you guys. I do so much appreciate <laughs> those that have hung out. I'll hear all about it <laughs> when I get done <laughs> from someone, hopefully. And hopefully uh, this will never happen again. Gosh. But you know what? Whatever. You know, we survive. <laughs> oh, this is so pretty. So much for background. Forget it. I, <laughs> I want to keep it. And just think. Just think if this was resined. How cool. Um, still no. So I got lost. I guess it wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't matter if I was seeing it or not. Oh, it's so pretty. Look 
kind of like just doing fractals through colors. Could be an explosion just by pulling your palette knife through. That kind of looked neat. I do like that. Hold on. Hold on. I just don't like that area, so I'm going to just wipe it out like that. And I can let it dry, or I can just keep working with it like that. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, working with an art journal, but it's a big piece of wood instead. It's really therapeutic just to going, you know, the colors and the flow, especially with a unicorn spin. <laughs> it's too fun. And we're getting back to texture. I've got a super soggy thing right there. Weirdness. Something to be said for weirdness in art. Colors, flows, textures. I, just, I do love it. I absolutely love it. It doesn't have to be anything. I love that. And I look at people's art like this forever because <laughs> there is so much going on. All right, I seriously got to get this off of my hands and stop. But I'm liking, the, definitely liking that flaming color on this side anyway. I don't think about, I don't think about the black on the other side. Um, I think it's going to be a perfect background because I can highlight something right off of that and it'll be a nice contrast. But for right now, seriously, this time for real, this is where we're going to stop while we're playing in our spit. I'll have to work on that mushroom box by myself. It's just so deep. You guys couldn't see anything <laughs> anyway. And um, the uh, tech stuff will be fixed, I'm sure. And so thanks for your love and your support. I felt you guys. <laughs> I appreciate Thomas sending me that message in between time that I found. And I appreciate you so much, um, all of you, for the gifts, the love, and especially the support. Especially on days like these. So, okay, you all have a great day and love and light to everybody. Bye. <laughs>